Hey guys, so uh, my last video uh, addressing the modern day traditional Catholic movement uh, kind of caused a little bit of ambiguity, so I like to clarify my. Uh, okay, so my stance is this that we need to go back to how things used to be uh, pre Vatican II. We need to go back to the old rite of the <clears throat> to the old rite of the mass. It can be Latin or in the vernacular. It, it 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 doesn't really matter. But we need to go back to the old mass. We need to make the mass more reverent. We need to go back to the way that things used to be. That is my stance. I am a traditional Catholic. However, the modern day traditional Catholic movement is something entirely different. Like if you if you've seen the documentary called Mass of the Ages, that documentary is filled with a bunch of historical uh, errors, and which propagates a false belief, and makes Catholics believe in things that go against the church. Right. Okay. So. So why is the modern day tr traditional Catholic movement more modernistic than the modernists in the Vatican? Because the the tr the talking heads of this traditional movement, they are not siding with all traditional Catholic beliefs. They will call Pope Francis a heretic. They will call him this and that and the other thing. Basically, the way that Eastern or the Eastern Orthodox apologists um, react and talk about Pope Francis is the same way that these so-called tr traditional Catholics also do. You know, of which that's a problem. They take certain traditions, like let's just go with the old rite of the mass, communion of the tongue. Uh, Latin, um, ad orientum, and you know more. But they will leave out certain things and reject them. Like a lot of these traditional Catholics, Dr. Taylor Marshall, Kennedy Hall, return to uh, tradition. And there are others, but those are the only people that come to mind. Um, I have watched others. And the, these so-called traditional Catholics do not know their own councils. Vatican I makes it clear that the Holy See will remain undefiled until the end. So if you're going to accuse Pope Francis of heresy, what you're doing is that you are calling the magisterium heretical because it is allowing this pope to teach error, which therefore, ipso facto, would literally contradict the Catholic system and prove Eastern Orthodoxy. Right? Pro problem number two. The Eighth, Ecumen Eighth, I'm sorry, the Eighth Ecumenical Council states that the Roman See cannot be judged by anyone. So you are judging the Roman See on dogma and on morality. Which Vatican I explicitly states, you have no authority to do that. Your private judgments are your private judgments. But we need to submit ourselves to the Pope, mind, body, and will. Because that is the teaching of the Church. From St. Peter until now, nothing's changed. This has been a consistent teaching for almost 2,000 years. We need to submit ourselves, mind, body, and will, to the Pope. Read Una Sanctum. What I'm not saying is that we need to adhere to every little damn thing that he says, right? Mind, body, and in will. What does that mean? On on actions, so actions in terms of of him uh, acting as pope with his um, power, that we need to submit ourselves to that. Because that is divine. The magisterium is a is a living office because it, um, the Holy Spirit guides it. If you call the Pope a heretic, you are saying that this Pope is either one, a heretic, which would disprove the entire Roman Catholic system, 
one, two, you are saying that he's that he is an anti-pope. Now we have had anti-popes in the past, and that's fine. Vatican I is in perfect harmony with anti-popes. The problem becomes is we have no authority to make that statement. We we cannot call the Pope a heretic and still call ourselves Catholic. Private judgments are that, private judgments, but we need to submit ourselves to the magisterium. If you don't do that, you're not Catholic. This is the teaching of Holy Mother Church. Right? These people, they nitpick traditions and then they cast others out. Like this common belief, and it's ridiculous, that the Latin Mass is apostolic. When no, it's not. The modern-day Latin Mass was codified at the Council of Trent, and ever since then, it's been modified by every pope. Like, you have the St. Pope Pius X Missal, Pius XI Missal, uh, Benedict XV Missal, Pius XII Missal, John XXIII Missal. Right, so every pope has the own. Well, they used to have their own um, messe, if if you want to say the French way. So to say that the pope is promulgating error is to say that the Catholic Church is not the true Church. In terms of Archbishop Vigano, Archbishop Vigano is no longer. Um, in communion with Rome. He calls Pope Francis a heretic. He he has made the declaration that the that this pope is, is an anti-pope. He is ordaining priests illicitly with no canonical reason behind it. When we look at the case of Archbishop Lefebvre, it makes sense why Lefebvre did what he did. And I'm for it. Because long story short, they were supposed to give the fraternity of St. Peter a bishop. That was 40 years ago, and they still don't have a bishop. They were prolonging uh, this, and they were pushing Lefebvre more and more and more, because they knew Lefebvre was dying of cancer. So they wanted him to die in this traditional pre-Vatican II movement to die off. So that's why Lefebvre did what he did. That's a valid canonical reason, okay? Vigano is doing it illicitly. There's no causality behind it, no valid canonical reason behind it. He can't invoke any canon... Um, yeah, he can't invoke any canons that that would show that he's in the right. He, by all intents and purposes, is a set of a Contes archbishop. Vigano is not Catholic anymore. He's a schismatic. And these traditional Catholics support him. Like, I, I came across a short, I think it was like yesterday, of Dr. Taylor Marshall saying what he would do if he was Pope. One of the things that he said was that he would reinstate Archbishop Vigano. Again, these people, they support a set of accountants, they support a schismatic, and yet they, they, they dunk on the Eastern Orthodox for not being in communion with Rome. All the while, they are supporting an archbishop who is violating his own ecumenical councils. If that's not hypocrisy, I don't know what is. Lastly, Satan makes the path to hell look good so it'll entice people the trad movement there is a there are two movements actually going on okay there's a real trad movement and then there then there is the um the satanic trad movement the real trad movement movement are people like myself who are advocating um and trying to to make the church go back to how she used to be um, before all of the changes. People like me want the church to go back to the old ways. For me, I don't really care if the mass is said in Latin or not. 
but the mass needs to be reverent, right? So since we're Latins, we're Westerners, we need to keep fast to Western traditions. We're, we're not Eastern Catholics here. At least I'm not yet. So we need to keep fast to those traditions. We threw them out back in the 60s, and now look at the state of the church, okay? People like me are true Orthodox, traditional Catholics who are obeying the Pope, submitting to his magisterium, all the while using our frontal lobes to, to, to think critically about issues. If the Pope says something problematic, I'm going to show it. I, I'm not a Michael Lofton. Pope Francis has scandalized the church by his ambiguity. Eric Yabar also stated this on Avoiding Babylon. Okay, so the satanic trad movement, uh, people like Taylor Marshall, Kennedy Hall, return to tradition, and many others who they are dissenting from his holiness. They are calling him a heretic. They are saying that he's an anti-pope. Again, not all of them. But the fact that you have Taylor Marshall calling him Jorge Bergoglio, you have returned to traditions, I'm saying, well, his alleged papacy. One would have to use Occam's razor that the likelihood of these people and people like them, mentioned and unmentioned, probably believe in the same thing, that Pope Francis is probably not the Pope. And you again, private judgments are just that. If you believe that Pope Francis is an anti-Pope, obviously that's a problematic um, belief. But that's a private belief that should not be set out in public. Because if you're wrong, that's a grave sin. So it's so it's best to believe he is the Pope because if he isn't, then guess what? You're not gonna you're not gonna be judged for. It. But if you say, excuse me, that he isn't the Pope and he is the Pope, God's gonna hold that against you on judgment day. Right? So Satan makes this modern day mainstream traditional Catholic movement seem enticing. Like we have people like the the um remnant. Accusing the Pope of all sorts of things, saying, well, he's trying to destroy the family, he's trying to do this and try to do that. Look, he actually might, but I don't have the authority to say that. And to be honest, I don't know even if he is. But these people are believing and acting and falling into calumny, and they are... They are listening to the devil's voice because the devil is telling them this is a good movement. This is a traditional Catholic movement that will restore the church to how she used to be, like under the pontificate of Pius XII and and uh, earlier popes. And these people have fallen in line with that. Okay, that that's my stance on my last video. Okay, this is my position. More of the traditional Catholics know, know about Fatima than Vatican I, Vatican II, Nostra Aetate, Pastor Aeternus, the Council of Trent, the Council of Florence, um, the Synod of Zamush, um, Una Sanctum, Dictatus Pape, the Eighth Ecumenical Council, the Ninth Ecumen Like These people don't know anything about this. They... They... They only believe in things that they're told. They are they they're fed a certain narrative and they believe it. We need to critically think for ourselves: Is Pope Francis a problematic pope? Yes, he is. Is he an anti-pope? I don't know, but I'm still going to believe that he is the pope because I don't want that to be on my shoulders. That. When I stand before God on Judgment Day, it turns out that I was wrong, and I publicly um, spread this this schismatic belief that he is an anti-pope, and it turns out that he was a real pope. What do you think God's going to do to me, or what he's going to say to me? Just the same thing with you. So it's best to believe he is the pope, right? Because if not, as I said... So that's my stance on my last video on the traditional Catholic movement. There are two types of movements. You have the good and then you have the bad. The, 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 the more mainstream movement is bad because it's satanic wrapped up in Catholic traditionalism. 
So that's my stance. Ave Maria.